going? Yep. Okay. Uh, this problem is a, an exercise to develop uh, uh, our dimensional analysis skills, and we're going to apply the dimensional analysis to uh, just finding out what the limiting reagent in a reaction is, uh, as well as the theoretical yield of a reaction, and then the, uh, the, the percent yield of a given reaction. And, but it's going to be the dimensional analysis that's going to provide us the, 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 the ability to solve this and a plethora of other problems. So this is a crucial skill. And the problem in this, in this case involves uh, is the following. 22 grams of sodium metal is brought into contact with 22 grams of carbon dioxide gas and the mixture is heated. The following reaction occurs. I have four sodium metals in the solid state and one carbon dioxide in the gaseous state, which is heated, and that's depicted by a delta over the arrow, which denotes heat in this case. And I get as a product uh, one carbon in the solid state and two sodium oxides in the solid state. And the first question is, what is the eliminating reagent? And we're assuming the, the atomic weight of sodium is 22 grams per mole. The molecular weight of carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole. And the molecular weight of sodium oxide is 60 grams per mole. But before we go into this problem any further, it's a good idea to look ahead and to part B. Part B is what is the theoretical yield of sodium oxide? So we're going to take this into account when we go to solve part A and we're going to cast everything in terms of the sodium oxide product so that we'll do a lot of the heavy lifting in part A and it'll make part B much more clear and simple. And then uh, part C is going to be about the, the percent yield. This will be the same regardless of which way we approach it, but it's going to be on the sodium oxide. And so now, let's go to solve the problem. And I've already written part of the setup here. Um, and, and the key is, we're going to start with the given information, which is the 22 grams of the sodium and the 22 grams of the carbon dioxide. Now we're going to go from the 22 grams of sodium first. And I want to start with that on the left hand side and in my dimensional analysis I'm going to be going from grams of sodium to moles of sodium. So the moles of sodium is going to be my first uh, factor, and, and, and it's going to be the moles of sodium are going to be in the numerator, and the grams of sodium are going to go in the denominator. And so the, the, the grams of sodium are going to cancel, and I'm going to go from grams of sodium to moles of sodium. And then I have to ask the question where does it go from there in terms of how much sodium oxide is going to be produced for every mole of sodium and there's where we use the information contained in the balanced equation and I use the mole ratio. I have two moles of sodium oxide which are produced for every four moles of sodium. Now it's a good idea to not simplify this expression. I have four, two moles of sodium oxide in the numerator, four moles of sodium in the denominator. That does simplify to one half, which I will do later on mathematically, but I want to explicitly not do that in the setup. Your setup will illustrate your logic, and in case you make a mathematical mistake, um, I'm going to be grading your setup more than the math. If you make a mathematical error but your setup is correct, you're going to get most of the points. If you take shortcuts, and that's the real point here, never take a shortcut. 
this would be a shortcut if I simplified it here. So I'm going to leave it in this form, and then we'll talk about how to solve the problem. And, uh, and so I take the first part, 22 grams divided by 22 grams. Well, that's one. And now, uh, two moles divided by four moles in, in the second term is one half. So one times one half gives me uh, 0 0.5 moles of sodium oxide. And now we do the exact same type of a setup with the carbon dioxide. I start over here with the 22 grams that I was given of carbon dioxide. I'm going to want to go from grams of carbon dioxide to moles of carbon dioxide. And so the moles of carbon dioxide goes in the uh, numerator for the first uh, uh, term. And the grams of carbon dioxide goes in the denominator. So that takes me from grams of carbon dioxide to moles of carbon dioxide. And then I'm going to have, in the next term, two moles of sodium oxide from the balanced equation in the numerator for every one mole of carbon dioxide reactant in the balanced equation. So now I can have it given this and with explicitly all of the terms uh, and, and units included. So you don't take shortcuts. You do not not include a unit. Everything is clear. I can follow the logic. I start over here in grams. I end up in moles of product. And this time, 22 divided by 44 is 1 half. 1 half times 2 is 1. So it's 1.0 moles of sodium oxide. So now, let's talk about the, uh, the concept of limiting reagent. The limiting reagent is the one that is going to be completely consumed in a reaction. And um, the, uh, the, we're leaving an excess of the, the other reactant or reactants. So it's the one that's going to be definitely consumed and it's going to limit the amount of product. So we're using the fact that, you know, we're using to measure this, we're using the amount of product that's produced. So which gives us the fewest uh, 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 sodium oxides? Obviously, it's the sodium. It's going to give us that, uh, uh, the, the, the lowest yield, the, the theoretical yield, and it's going to be so, so sodium uh, uh, turns out to be Now, this is another key feature I want to bring everybody's attention to. Uh, I've seen people do this many times on tests where they do all the, the work and they don't answer the question. So we have to ask, what was the question? And the question is, what is the limiting reagent? I've seen all this work and nobody brings any attention to, what, to answering the actual question, which means you're not going to get full credit. So in order to, to, to get full credit and to do this most effectively, you want to slow down, take your time, and clearly define everything, and, and, and conclude all the units, and answer the question at hand. So that's part A. Um, yeah, let's stop it there.